Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another Saturday Night Live Smoke Show, and uh, glad to have you guys here. Tonight, I'm going to be checking out a 2019, so super fresh, Canadian Individual Meal Pack, or IMP for short. This is a menu number 9, Southwestern Chipotle Chicken. Okay, so Southwestern Chipotle Chicken. That, uh... I don't know what Southwest means. I mean, you know, I know what Chipotle tastes like, but uh, let's see where they draw their inspiration from the Southwest area. So, this is obviously an American-inspired dish, being the Southwest of America, or the United States. It'd be interesting to see what their take on Southwestern Chipotle chicken will be. I also have right here this boiling or boiling... Bowling, maybe it's Bowling. Shirley Temple. Established 1891. Now, this right here came from Blindside. This is a limited release. He got this at Jungle Gems. Jungle Gems has some amazing drink selections. They have, well, I think they have, they make some really crazy claim. Like, they have every beer in the world or something, and if they don't have it, They'll get it, or they'll get you like half a six pack for free or something if you bring one up that they don't have. It's it's something crazy like that. They have at least they claim to have at least two or three on hand, something like that. You'd have to look it up, but it's pretty crazy. And that is where he got this at was Jungle Gems. Let's see, I think is that a 2022 Best Buy date or something? I don't know. Yep, Best Buy February. Uh, yeah, it looks like 2022. February 12th, 2022. Awesome. I must admit that I have never had a Shirley Temple before. Ingredients are carbonated water, cane sugar, natural flavors, whatever that means, citric acid, fruit and vegetable juice for color, and sodium benzoate. And that preserves freshness. So... I looked up what a Shirley Temple is, and none of those ingredients made me think Shirley Temple that I just read off of this bottle, so I don't know. Guess we'll just have to find out. I also have a box off to the side here. We're going to start off with this box. This is a box that Gabe Rilla, my buddy Gabe, sent me this. You guys have got to go check out Gabe's channel. Uh, it's very different from what I do. Uh, don't you know, if you go over there and you don't enjoy the content, that's cool. Not a big big deal. But if you do enjoy the content, smash that subscribe button for Gabe. He, he definitely needs to grow his channel some. And hopefully, we can help him do that right here. Now, anybody who... Uh, I think my YouTube counter thing here is definitely lagging to catch up. Because it stayed on zero for a long time and there were people chatting in here. So... Anybody you guys know that might enjoy this live stream that are not here or uh, you think they might have forgotten or something, if you've got a way of getting a hold of them, let them know that the live stream's going on. We're going to be on here for roughly two hours right now. Now, I've got this box right here. Do I have a magic marker? I do. Let me uh, try to mark out my address real quick Ugh. so that that doesn't get out there. And I'm going to mark Gabe's out as well. Excuse me, guys, while I do this. This is something I typically take care of beforehand, and I obviously forgot. I don't know that I really forgot. I just uh, just picked this up. try to keep this turned away from the camera anyways so I don't have to worry about it but still take the time to mark it out anyway yeah 
And while I'm doing this, if anybody wants to go and check out Gabriella's channel, you can do that. Uh, next week, I'm thinking about going to, uh, pretty much told Bob that I'm going to lock it in. I'm going to be going and visiting Minotaur in person. I'm going to be doing a live stream from there with another YouTuber. Hopefully, I need to discuss those details with Bob. That's the way it's supposed to be. We're going to be basically debuting the uh, Kronos that he's got made up over there. He did put a video out about that that I still have not watched. I'm not going to lie. I've been very, I guess you'd call it busy. My son went to the state golf tournament that was up in Wheeling, West Virginia. And uh, that took up oh most of this week, quite a few days of this week. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get into this box. So, oh, sorry about watching the table there, Beetlejuice. My bad. I moved that stuff out of the way to put this box up here, and then I forgot to mark out the address. So, <laughs> yeah, sorry about that, guys. All right, let's get into this box. We're not going to waste any time here. I don't know if Gabe is here, but I know Gabe doesn't care. He'll say, just go ahead and rip into it. It's kind of dude he is. All right, I'm going to have to stand it up here. It's kind of a little bit fragile. Uh, there is a special sticker on the front that says that it is uh, liquid and perishable which uh, typically I lie to the <laughs> post office if there's something like that in a uh... oh I know I know I was just just clarifying for anybody else who might might have wondered the same thing there Beetlejuice but yeah typically I don't tell them <laughs> that there's something that is liquid because I mean a retort has liquid in it nine times out of ten and things like that so here we go I have no idea what is in here actually guys I mean I have an, have an idea that there's obviously liquid in here and Gabe has sent me some really cool vintage brews before and that's what this is going to be but I don't know what they are so uh, and he did say he would he took quite a bit of time to wrap them up this time as you can see here got them nicely bubble wrapped and taped so they didn't get damaged in shipping this time last time we had two of them get opened up in the uh, shipping process so instead of unwrapping this all the way I'm just going to try to take it out of the bottom of the yeah there we go Ooh, look at this highbrow or bra bra how do, I, how do I say that? That's interesting. I wonder if that's all supposed to look like that, or if that's some sort of fading that's happened. Brewed in Wisconsin, Little Switzerland. Oh, wow. This is a premium beer, as it, <coughs> excuse me, as it claims on the bottom right here. This is a pool tab. We have an A301, which I see that a lot on these old steel cans. This is a crimped style seam not a leaded seam so that definitely uh gives us an idea on the age of that one yep that's going to roll right off of there i'm gonna have to set it up for right now and then we'll take a look at them all whenever i get them out go ahead and get this one out take this piece of tape which i don't have to put them all back in this bubble wrap now that they're here they are safe now that they're in my house. There we go. And I'll go through the comments here in a little bit and say hello to everyone. And if you enjoy this type of video and stuff like that, be sure to hit that thumbs up. Let Google and YouTube know what you're thinking. Oh, a Moosehead beer. This is a Canadian lager, most likely an import. What do we have here? Brewed and bottled by Moosehead Breweries Limited. Canada's oldest independent brewery. Huh. Quality and tradition from Canada's oldest independent brewery. Okay, basically the same thing there. There we go. Imported by All Brands Importers Incorporated. Lake Lake Success, New York. And this is a actual pop top. Stay on tab. <laughs> they advertise that it's a stay on tab don't try to you know rip it off there and it also 
has directions of lift the tab. So this is a most likely a first era. Oh, it has a barcode as well. That's another telling sign. But now I can't tell if that's this can rusting or if that's off of something else. Probably off of something else. Kind of feels like an aluminum can. Let's see if it's marked anywhere. There's that. There's a. That's 31R stamped in there. I don't know. It does. It it feels like it's an aluminum can. So this one will be really good. I could be wrong. This no. There's no seam on here either. As you can see. Interesting. I've heard of Moosehead before, and I'll bet there's a lot of Canadians out there who've heard of Moosehead before. I don't know how popular uh, brew that is up there, but well, this one's being really tough. Might have to cut it. Yep, nope, found, found the end. There we go. All right. I think I might have accidentally turned my video quality down. I hope not. I hope it's at least 720p right now. Uh, Moosehead is in an aluminum can. It's not bad as long as it's cold. Huh, okay. Murray Barber's uh, comment there. This is a steel can with a crimped seam. This is a Laurentide. Laurentide Ale. This is a foreign. It's got, well... It's a foreign company. Oh, French. It's got some French on there. Looks like Quebec. Where he uh, is close to the border up there, he probably gets a lot of this, sees a lot of these. Down here where I live, you'd never you'd never see this stuff. Now, this can is definitely a steel can. That's an interesting seam. Very interesting. I've never seen a seam like that. Typically, the crimped seams look like this one right here. This one right here is like interlaced. I like the way that that design is right there. The uh, construction, quite unique. And this is a pull tab as well. Please do not litter. So we're talking probably the 70s right there. We're probably talking a 50 year old brew there. This is probably gonna be in the 30s. And this one right here, this could be in the 40s. And this one right here is probably going to be around the same 50 area. Yeah, 45, 50. Brewed and filled by... What's that say? Hubber Brewing Company, Monroe, Wisconsin. There we go. Okay, we've got another one here. Oh, I'm definitely looking forward to... Uh, Getting into one of these, Bosch Premium Beer. It's a really interesting looking can. Look at that. The color is awesome. Now, I, the ones that I can open from the bottom, I'm going to open from the bottom and keep them as a really nice. Lots of people collect beer cans. Um, I'm not one of them so far, but I do have a collection of old beer cans. So, <laughs> every one of them that I've drank, I still have. Let's see. This one was brewed and filled by Jacob... Uh, Line and Kugel, okay. Brewing Company, Chippewa Falls, Wisconsin. Yeah. Oh, it's kind of made to be like that. This is from the Sportsman's Paradise. And then this side's meant to be upright. And this side's meant to be sideways. You don't see that very often. Like a horizontal print like that. Interesting. All right. That is the four that was contained in the first little grouping of pack of, of this package. Move this. Oh, all I can smell is rust. <laughs> Those steel cans, they definitely have a smell to them that very familiar would be familiar to anyone who's ever smelled rust before. Okay. Oh, we're gonna do that one last. Alright. Oh, this one feels really light. Really light. Weird. Even if I was to try to cut and rip into these things, it would take, take me longer than disassembling them like I am right now. 
This one feels like it may have opened up or something. I don't know. Very lightweight. Whoa. What do we have here? Black Label Beer. The world's leading internationally brewed beer. Look at this can. It's a very interesting can. It's an aluminum can, but it does not feel full. Feels like it's only full to about right there. So it's a 14 ounce. It's just slightly larger than your standard can size. Let's see. Hang on. I'm going to lift the camera up a little bit right here. Just a little bit larger. Oh. Back these up. There we go. Just a little bit larger than your standard can size there. But it feels... I don't know. I don't see any damage or any opening on it. But it just doesn't feel even close to full. And it does feel like it's still sealed. Well, I don't know. I could dent it. Probably. I don't know. It does have a little bit dent on it right there. But it's in very good shape. This is brewed by the Carling Brewing Company, Baltimore, Maryland. Belleville, Illinois. Frankmouth, Michigan. Oh, Natick, Massachusetts. We know where Natick is, don't we? Since 1840. Now, I'll say this. That looks uh, very, very, very similar to the uh, Budweiser emblem. Maybe they have some sort of uh, correlation there. I don't know. No, kitty, go. Don't start today. I don't need you. Okay. These are all interesting. They're going to be fun to uh, check out. Now, on top there, it says Georgia tax paid. Huh. What's up with that? Was this sold on a military base or something? Is that why they had the tax paid on it? Yeah, that's interesting. I'll have to figure that one out, too. Huh. Oh, oh. Oh, no. Okay. Whoa. Look at this thing. Tenets Girls? A Angela on the bench. Okay. <laughs> that is freaking interesting. Tenets Lager. Trademark. Wow, what a can. What a can. Tenants Caledonia Breweries Limited, Scotland. Check that out. Tell me that ain't vintage. That's straight up 70s. It's a pool tab. It's definitely been compromised at some point. It looks like there's probably a hole right there. And I'll be honest, I probably won't drink this one. I don't know. Contents UK, 11.66 fluid ounce. USA, 11.21 fluid ounce, 333 milliliters. That's super cool, though. How cool is that? That is super cool. I mean, it's still got a lot of firmness to it, but it's definitely been compromised, which Gabe obviously knew that. Oh, no. Ah. Go hold that tape over. Let it get stuck to my blackboard back there. Got one, one more in here and one more out there to go through. Oh, he's got a note up in this mug. Uh, I don't know if Gabe wants me to read this or not. If he tells me that he wants me to read it, I'll, I'll read it. So, Gabe actually had some poetry that was published. And uh, I read that there about a week ago. He sent me a link to where it was at. And uh, that was really cool. It's definitely uh, something he's worked towards for quite a while. And, and he accomplished it, which is awesome. 
What do we have here? Old German style beer. 12 fluid ounces. Look at that can. Well, that is a good looking can right there. Very simple, yet elegant. Famous flavor, it says. It's definitely a, a currency font. Kind of looks like money up there. And then old German style beer. There's not much writing on this can at all. Dispose of properly. That is a cool, cool. All these cans are cool, man. I dig old cans. I do. Um, maybe I should have a collection of them, but I don't. Well, other than the ones that I've drank personally. Oh, yep, knew that was knew that was coming. All right, good enough. Got one heck of a collection of bubble wrap back there. Now, you guys, this one right here is pretty special. Um, I know Gabe bought this with the intentions of drinking it himself. And then since he has stopped drinking the old brews in steel cans, and uh, he's got a theory that that might have been uh, messing with him a little bit, and it very well could have been, because he, he's drank a lot of old brews in steel cans. But look at this. Look at this. Guys, that looks like an old oil can. We did a cone top uh, similar to this on Eating History. And if you guys have not checked out Eating History, please do that at history.com or you can check it out on demand. Or I think it's still on Hulu Live. It's airing in Canada right now. It's on Wednesdays at 10. Well, I don't know, 9, 10, I don't know, 10 o'clock from what I've seen on the channel guide. And uh, yeah, Gabe actually paid a good bit of money for this. And I think it's from 1941. From what he told me, he did his research on this. I'm going to have to do some myself. This is a Barclays or Barclays cool before serving. <laughs> it tells you that you need to chill it. And this one's in really good shape, actually. This one might be in better shape than the cone top that we drank on the show. It feels better. Now, Gabe might have put some cleaning, a little bit of elbow grease into cleaning this. I don't think that he did. But uh, it feels... It feels good. Now, the one that we had on the show, if you haven't seen that episode, I'm not going to tell you what happens, but that's one of the craziest things that happened while filming the show was when we drank the Cone Top beer on the show. Straight up crazy. This is a sparkling beer. Barclays Perkins and Company Limited out of London, England. Brewed and canned at the brewery. Uh, produced, of, I guess that means product of Great Britain. Go on. They like to spell things differently over there. Like the word collar. They don't spell it the same. They spell it with a U. I don't know if I have any uh, European viewers right now, but if so, you guys spell things differently. Oddly, sometimes, <laughs> versus the way we spell things. All right, kitty, go. 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 How's the sound, guys? I have not been using the microphone this time. Hopefully, everything sounds good, but if you listen to it, with headphones later, the, uh, the microphone might pick up to the left-hand side more than it does the right-hand side or something. So I'm going to remedy that right now by plugging in the microphone. Oh, hey, what's up, Sparrow9612? Now, I have not looked at the chat basically the entire time. And uh, I don't know if I missed any super chats or anything like that. I have not. Good deal. All right, live chat. I'm going to lay all these out right here. Looks like we have a total of eight of them. Make it a little closer together, it looks like. And then we're going to rip into this IMP really quick. While I deliver some IMP information. This one takes front and center stage right here. Maybe I can lay it down like so. Yeah, there we go. Look at that spread of... I mean, dude, I don't know why, but I love that vintage picture printed on a can. There's just something 
I don't know, so nostalgic about that. that kind of, I mean, this reminds me of pictures that we had back in the 80s. Well, that would have been around in my house whenever I was a little kid, you know. Because uh, a lot of the pictures that would have been around in my house when I was a little kid would have been printed in the 70s. So, yeah. IMP's number one. <laughs> okay. About to drink some what? Fat tire beer. Not old, but it's beer. <laughs> okay. Uh, one of my favorite aunt's dogs snuck a drink of her beverage some years ago. Don't recall what it was, other than it was alcohol in nature, alcoholic in nature, and the dog couldn't stand up straight. You know, that's always good stuff. Oh, Chris Stivers just came in with a super chat there. Well, thank you for that super chat, Chris. And hello, everyone, is what he said. So, say everyone say hello to Chris. What's up, Chris? Yeah, these beers are awesome. And I have not had a drink in a long time. So, when I do drink one of these, it's probably going to uh, rock my world. I'm going to use them as the backdrop right now. I can't get over how light this can feels. And I know... Well, I don't know, but I'm pretty sure it's not compromised in any way. And it's got that weird bottom. That recessed bottom. I don't know what the point of that was. Maybe for stacking. And that's why they quit making the cone tops, actually. Because, obviously, they couldn't stack the beers. Whereas, like this, they could. You know, when they're side by side, they hold each other up. Which, I don't know, maybe, let me see here couple around the same era see how they set together now, they made the bottoms to where they wouldn't lock in together which seems like such a simple thing to do and they didn't do it but i gotta say a huge huge thanks to gabriella for sending this stuff along especially this barclays or barclays man that is that's a that's a gem that is a gem Meaning G E M, a gem. Sparkling gem. All right. So, real quick, do I have my church key handy? I don't know that I do. Every time I look down, I look at these little porcelain, this little porcelain cigar case. Look at that. So cool. That's going to go in my cabinet whenever I reposition everything. I'm going to be moving this stuff pretty soon, hopefully. All right, I'm digging into the Shirley Temple right now because it's still nice and cold, and I want to drink some of it while it's nice and cold. Never had a Shirley Temple before, so I don't know. Maybe this is a twist top. Let me check. Very well could be. Yeah, twist off. So here we go. Nice. All right, down the hatch. Whoa. That's different than what I thought it was going to be. Definitely has some sort of a light vegetable flavor. I can't pick out what it is. Definitely ginger ale or something like that. Hmm. Hmm. Sorry for the lip smacking there. I'm trying to get a good read on that. Huh. Picking up like a lemon lime soda in there. Definitely some sort of some sort of vegetable coming through. I don't know, man. Oh, there went the cap. Dang it. Let's see if I can find it real quick. Not that I really need it, but uh, it would help just in case it gets knocked over. Oh, there it is. Okay, cool.
get into this 2019 Southwestern Chipotle chicken. So uh, I don't know if Gus did, uh, let, let me go down through the hello Miss Sunshine. I hope you've been doing good. I hope the uh, hope the coronavirus is not still hanging with you. I've been staring at this ever since I came in here and got everything set up. This little <laughs> stub of a leftover from last week and uh it's a palm oil and i'm i'm gonna fire this butt up ow ow it's almost too tiny i think i burnt my hair a little bit <laughs> anyway wanted to go through the uh the comments and say hello to everybody that I can. Hey, there's K man. <clears throat> uh, James Ortiz, what's up? Uh, looks like Sean is here. Craig, Craig Scrambler. Never seen that name before. But what's up? Uh, Aletha, hello, Mike. What's up? That is Mike. Wait a minute. Gerdman, I think I said that right. Mike, sorry, man. Putting you to sleep. I hear you, buddy. Uh, James Ortiz, what's up? Renee Hathaway, hello. Uh-oh. What just happened? Tell me. Things did not get deleted. Anyways, let's get into this thing. Let's see what is in here. I do not know what the contents of this are. Smitty has a contents list for the 2019, but I did not look through it. And, uh, as far as IMP history goes, like, Smitty has a pretty solid, um, well, he's got some decent information built up, but there's not a whole lot of solid information that's out there in print or on the internet. So, in print, by I mean on the internet. Start with the Southwestern Chipotle Chicken. We have... Canadian hamburger bun. Oh, a big Kit Kat. That's a chunky, chunky Kit Kat. What's that say? 100% sustainably sourced cocoa. Okay. Never noticed that before. Oh, we have a uh, ice sports drink. It's the blue kind. <laughs> it's like blue kool -Aid. Sorry, I just dropped that, guys. Ooh. Here we have a Nescafe. Sweet and creamy. So it's a three-in-one. Mm. Oh, raspberry jam. My favorite. That is my favorite jam. Cranberry maple trail mix. I don't know if I've had that or not. Maybe. We have a uh, peanut butter, pretty solid. 20 grams on those. We have another ice sports drink. I'm glad they went back to two because they did go to one there for a while. I didn't like that. Didn't like that. We have a pack of matches, white tip. These are Pembroke. Yep, made by Eddie Match, Pembroke, Ontario. Got some Tic Tacs. Should be what four of them in there? Yep, four of them in there. I do not like the Tic Tacs. Much rather have gum. Get stuff out of your teeth and whatnot. Nice little sachet of Tabasco. And we have our dinner mint. 
<laughs> the good old gusseted Canadian beverage bag. It's a gym. And we have our Canadian butt ration. Okay, does any Canadian out there know? Do they hand you guys out like rolls of toilet paper or what? They're going out and they're handing you IMPs. Are they also handing you toilet paper or are you expected to have your own? Because this right here, this is not going to cut it for your butt ration. I'm sorry. You can separate this into two, but your finger's probably going to go through it. That's the case. But, uh, I mean, you know, it's, it's definitely adequate as far as a napkin goes for your meal. But if you had to use that for something else, I have a feeling you would suffer. And for our dessert, we have sliced apples. There it is. That is the entire, the entirety of the meal. So I can take, I can show you guys a picture or two that Smitty sent me there a little bit ago. Lay this out a little bit better than what I have it right now. Just so maybe I can take a screenshot of it later. Sorry, I'll hurry up with this, guys. That needs to go up there. There we go. Eh, oh well. Not going to get it. Tic Tac's flipped over the wrong way, of course. All right. So I'll pull a tray up here, throw all this out onto a tray, and then uh, we'll start going through it, and I'll talk about it a little bit. That feels really heavy. It's 280 grams. Huh. This feels heavier than, than usual. Whoa, hey, cyanide cookies. IMP butt rations designed to help you get in touch with your inner self. <laughs> Literally, right? Thank you for the uh, super chat. Mr. Dan, and uh, I emailed you the other day. Hopefully, you got that, and uh, I've got to check over on Patreon again. But thank you for that super chat, my dude. 20 Australian bucks coming in over there. Heating instructions not applicable to fruit. You're not supposed to heat the fruit, guys. I've seen way too many people do reviews of IMPs, and they heat the fruit. Now, the apples is one thing that you could heat, and, uh, yeah, I mean, honestly, you could you could heat the apples and eat them on a bun. It'd be kind of like, uh, it, it would probably taste decent, I'm not going to lie, because I, I get into stuff like that. Spiced apples are better heated. These are just straight up sliced apples and some pretty thin syrup. And uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go for heating these up, really. Just not my thing. Whoa, sunshine sign of life, uh, side of life. For loads of butt rations and essentials for the heinies. <laughs> well, thank you for that super chat, Miss Sunshine. And, uh, yeah, the uh, the whole butt ration thing. I've, I've got some good ones right here on standby. Can't remember what these came out of. No idea. These came out of a ration, though. <laughs> and these are the, um, the UK ones right here. The Paloma classic super soft i mean that right there you could get by with that i'm going to tell you but yeah thank you for that super chat hey you guys ch go check out miss Marilyn's her online store i don't mention it enough ann and allen.com look up ann and allen.com go check out her uh, gooey butter cake the holidays are coming up it's going to be perfect perfect for that should I heat the bun up, too? I think I'm going to this time. Yep. All right. Be right back, guys. splash out on my arm. That was awesome. All 
Alright. Get us a tray up here. So, the meal that the Canadians had before the IMP was a 24-hour ration. And it was it was in two parts, two boxes taped together. And I do believe it was called, yeah, yeah, it was an IRP prior to 1981. And of course, after 1981, they kind of seen, I'm sure, what the Americans were doing. And the retort technology had made its way up there to Canada. And this is what some early era IMPs look like. It's kind of hard to tell, but what they did was in the back, back there's like everything of your meal except the main. The main is in a box and taped to the rest of the ration. It's kind of hard to see, but that's what that green tape is. It taped the, uh, the main to the box. And then we also were talking about how there used to be breakfast, lunch, and supper. And now, the only thing, the 2019 cases are just marked breakfast, and then the other two cases are not marked at all. Your lunch and your supper are pretty much interchangeable. I've always thought that myself anyway, as far as the meals go. It's probably going to go over here. Jelly. Drink mixes. Mm, candy bar. Candy bar can go over here. And we'll take this. I have made up enough of these things that uh, don't need to do it again. I'm not eating these Tic Tacs. You don't know what a Tic Tac is or what it tastes like. It's just a tiny breath mint. And uh, they're, I guess Tic Tacs do have a unique flavor. They kind of, every, every Tic Tac I've ever thrown in my mouth has that initial flavoring of a slight vanilla. And then it goes into whatever flavor it is, orange or tropical or fresh mint, anything like that. But yeah, Tic Tacs are very standard, I guess, in flavor. They're not anything special. Take a look at our sliced apples. It's a date on this bad boy. Now, another thing that Canada does that we don't do, which also want to mention that each one of these, any ink that you see on here is edible ink. This is all food grade edible ink so you can boil this in your water and if any of the ink was to happen to leach off into your water it's not going to hurt you it's food grade you can consume it they have a five digit date code which is the united states needs to take you know take mention of this this was made in 2018 that's what the 18 stands for and the 311th day of 2018 now that's where you get into some confusing stuff going on in America. If you don't know your MREs really well, like a lot of us do that are in the community, I mean, if you're just a, the, a novice having MREs, you may be eating a 10 to, let's see, back to 08, so what would that be? What was that, 12, 12 years, right? So you could be eating up to a 12-year-old MRE and not even know it, you know? Almost every time I open these things, they squirt juice out of them. Almost. That time it did not. Look how fresh. I'm not going to lie. They smell a little bit weird. It doesn't just smell like apple. I don't know. It's, I guess it's probably that retort. Very light juice that they're in. I would call it juice more than a syrup.
But yeah, for some reason, they stopped making the uh, designation between the lunch and the supper. And I, a lot of people are complaining about that. Yeah, see. They used to have supper. Oh, dinner, I guess. Sorry. Not, or lunch. Lunch and dinner, and then you had supper. Those cases that you just saw are from 1991. Those pictures are courteous of Smitty. There used to be 12 IMPs per case, too. I didn't know that. Issued as breakfast, lunch, and lunch. Uh, breakfast slash lunch, lunch, and supper. All right, let's get this... Uh, sweet and creamy Nest Cafe going here, which is, again, three-in-one. Used to be three-in-ones that were in the IMPs, and it's probably just a Nest Cafe name change that they've made. Be my guess. Half tempted to uh, drink one of those brews that Gabe sent. Drink it warm. Don't know which one I would though. Maybe, maybe that one. The Laurentide Ale. The Highbrow. That's a cool one. Maybe, huh? One of those, maybe. I'll leave that up to you guys. You guys want to see me drink an old beer? I, I'm down. I am down tonight. I'm feeling it. Maritime's in the house. Maritime, huh? I know all about some Maritime. Trying not to leak onto... And I did anyways. Dang it. Let's put down a brand new board. Still leak water all over it, of course. Give it a quick stir. I didn't do that there a week or two ago, and when I didn't do it, the coffee got all hard and gooed up on the bottom. I'm going to go grab the main and the bread out of the hot water. Hopefully we can get some mobile live streams going here pretty soon. Uh, next week, most likely, the plan is to be in Kentucky. So as long as everything goes as planned, that's that's going to be an on-site live stream. Maybe even outside. I'm not sure exactly how he's wanting to do that or what his thoughts are as a plan goes. But we have to be somewhere near the Internet so as to not have the uh, same issues that I had last time. Last time it's not that great because of the internet. Ended up losing that footage, all of it. Cannot even watch it on YouTube because I guess because the connection was so bad. All right, let me get a cup here. Oh, there we go. Going to Pink Floyd this week. Ice sports drink. It's got a light blue tint to it. Very light. 
Mmm. Mmm. Really nice, that powder on its own. Focus. There we go. How much water does this take? 250 milliliters, so half a bottle. Pretty much what I have right here. Pretty close to half a bottle. Maybe not quite. Yeah, it's pretty close. Really nice blue color. It's got a really nice smell comes off of it. Too. Quick stir. This cranberry maple trail mix. What was that? Something just hit me in the leg. I don't know what that was. Weird. Right. Got a nice little tear notch right there. Oh, this was made in 2019, 106 day. Pretty wide range there. We're talking, I don't know what, 120 some days just between this and the uh, the apples. The apples are older. Would have been nice if they'd have been newer fresher than this because this would hold up a lot easier and uh <laughs> look at that it's like it's like one solid just eat it like a like a bar <laughs> a little bit of loose stuff in there not much ingredients in this we have well I ripped some of the ingredients off we have dried cranberries uh, maple, almonds, mm, raw cashews, pumpkin seeds, shelled sunflower seeds. That's everything that's in here. <gasps> Excuse me. Uh, soy lectin used as an emulsifier. We have uh, caramel coloring. Yeah. The typical additives that we're used to seeing in almost everything I guess uh -huh. let's take a look at our Kit Kat crunch I'm going to just open the end of it right here so we can see it if I put my fingers on it it will start to melt Kit Kats are great like that oh it's looking really good though like that Oh yeah, look at that. Isn't that nice? I don't know, there's just something about a really nice well-formed chocolate that makes it more appetizing than say a blob of chocolate, right? Let's get this Southwest Chipotle chicken out. Get it out of the top here. I know when I open this thing, it's going to end up squirting juice all over the place. It never fails. <sighs> tear notches. Two of them. So you kind of tear the top off. You can eat down some and then uh, tear it down some more as you eat it down. Just eating directly out of the pouch. Now see, if I was to put this in a bowl, it would probably stay hot longer. Let me grab a... I'm going to grab this bowl. Yeah, it just makes more sense. <sighs> Alright. There we go. Huh. Looks like soup. Hmm. I thought there was like a chicken breast in here. There is not. It's a bunch of shredded chicken. It's a pretty thick... Southwest Chipotle gravy. Let's see red peppers, green peppers. It's definitely got that Chipotle smell going on. Give me a squeeze here, real quick. There we 
go. Forgot to look at the sodium in this. Oh, that's the wrong box. What do I do with the box? Huh. Hmm. Okay, here we go. Sodium. Whew. Holy cow. My goodness. Over half of your daily value just in that one dish. 53%. 1,280 milligrams. I'm having a heart attack just thinking about it. My goodness. So, just by looking at it, it's definitely in some sort of a tomato base. Like, that's what that thick gravy is, is a tomato base. Uh, just glancing at the ingredients here, looks like chicken, uh, diced tomatoes, water, of course, is the second ingredient. Tomato juice, red bell peppers, green bell peppers. Notice both those. Uh, we got onion, we got poblano peppers. You see that? Poblano peppers, tomato paste, salt, which is way up on the list. Wow. Enriched wheat flour, modified cornstarch, coriander, chicken broth. A little bit of that in there. Spices, we got garlic puree, uh, sugar, lime juice concentrate, natural smoke flavor. Oh, that's cool that it's natural. I'm glad that the, it's not artificial. And then you got chipotle pepper seasoning and chili peppers. The last two ingredients. And it also says it contains milk and wheat. It does have a creamy look to it, but I didn't see where there was actually any cream or milk in, in here. It's probably made in the same factory with other things that, that do have it. So let's dig in here. Definitely a lot of pepper chunks in there. We got a substantial amount of chicken I would say what do we have here it's like here let me bring it up here looks like a chunk of onion translucent some shredded chicken in there what else do we see some brown meat chicken dark meat chicken yep there's chunks of tomatoes in there as well that's what that not the top one, but the one below it. That's a chunk of tomato right there that I just dropped off. All right. Well, here we go. Let me just uh, just dig in here. Down the hatch. Hmm, that reminds me of something. Something I've had before. The chicken's a little dry, but it doesn't bother me at all. I don't mind. I mean, it's not super dry because it's in all that moisture, but just the chicken itself it seems like it's dry chicken. Quite chewy. It's definitely got a light sweetness to it. Pick up on the onion. Uh, definitely the tomato. It's pretty prominent in the flavoring. It's definitely more of a soup than what I thought it was going to be. Definitely couldn't get away with putting that on a burrito. Which is kind of what I was thinking. Something similar to like the burrito bowl. Maybe I've had this one before. I don't know. I do feel like the bun is probably going to go pretty well with this. It just, it's where it's so soupy. I feel like it needs some sort of a, I don't know, something thick to tie it together. So I'm going to open up the, the old hamburger bun here. 
that thing. Not bad. There we go. We'll save the top piece for the peanut butter and jelly over there. I'm just going to have some of this with the main. Let's see how that is. All right. Let's find out. Definitely there's plenty of chicken in it too. I, I was kind of concerned that it, there, it might be light on the chicken. Mm. That's what it needed. It needed something to kind of bring it together. Give it a little bit more of a substantial mouth feel than just being some kind of liquid. I mean the chicken kind of stays behind as you're chewing it up and everything else goes away so you're just kind of left chewing up chicken and the bread really helps yeah this one would be you could eat this quickly I think Just doesn't feel like it's quite as substantial a meal as a lot of the other meals that I've had. Go on, cat. Go on. Yeah. Just feels kind of light. What is that? Is that chicken fat? Ew. No, thank you. Take one more bite of this. The thing is, it's got so much salt in it, but it doesn't taste... It doesn't taste overly salty at all. I'll be honest, I don't know how they hid that much salt but they have. Where did I, oh, there it is. It is, it, it's definitely tasty. I just saw a Ruler Yak or Ration Museum on here. Say it looks tasty. It is definitely tasty. This is a, this is a meal that would be easy to eat. It just doesn't feel like it's quite as substantial as I would prefer it to be. Especially being like a supper or lunch menu. Let's go for the peanut butter and jam next. Okay, so uh, I don't know what's going on with Shocker, 71's channel. The other day, he hit me up, and I went over to his channel. He had zero subscribers. I was his first subscriber to resubscribe to him. And I don't, honestly, I don't know the story behind that, what's going on with that. And then the other day, I was looking for one of his videos. He did a, a United Arab Emirates, United States, United Arab Emirates um, contracted MRE. And I wanted to see that video. And I it was gone. It wasn't on YouTube. It was gone. <clears throat> well, he had taken his channel down. They took I don't know what I don't know what happened. But and then yesterday it was back or day before. Yesterday or day before. No cat. It was back up, but he had no subscribers. I'm going for just a bite of peanut butter. Oh, that's the wrong bun. Going for the Going for the top part here. I'm just going to rip that off because it's barely hanging on there anyway. Let's take a look at this peanut butter. But he had zero subscribers. So you guys go check out Shocker71's channel. See what's going on over there. Subscribe to his channel if you're not already. Or if YouTube kicked all his subscribers off. 
Well, look at that. I see some little flecks of... I don't know what that is in there. See that dark stuff? I don't know what that would be. Talk Jay into taking you to Zombie Burger. I've never heard of Zombie Burger before. Uh, Dan, it's fine. Thank you uh, for our wedding anniversary. Well, happy anniversary, Jay and Aletha. Uh, Landel's on here. Yeah, I don't know what that, what those little specks are in there. Huh. Down the hatch. Hmm. Obviously very dry peanut butter. Peanut butter flavor, it's great. No complaints there. It does seem like the, um... <clears throat> The Canadian peanut butter used to have a slight sweetness to it. Let's see. Roasted peanuts. Sugar is the second ingredient. It's not as sweet as it used to be, unless my palate has changed, which it probably has. And then you got vegetable oil, cottonseed oil, other soybeans, salt, vitamin C, vitamin A, vitamin B6, and thiamine. It's probably some of those vitamins that I'm picking up that I'm seeing in there. You don't taste them, though. It tastes, it tastes good. I don't want to need this too much, but I do want to try to, there's a little bit of liquid separation always with any jam that you get, just about, it's, it's like, happens 9 out of 10 times, you get liquid that kind of shoots out of the package first, the smaller the hole, the more control, uh, that's a gun dog phrase. You guys don't know who Gundog is. Gundog, one of the OGs of ration reviewing. You guys go check out Gundog's channel. James Ortiz, good night, Smokey, and all, and y'all. Good night, Smokey, and y'all. Thank you, James, for that super chat, and good night, buddy. Thank you for coming to the uh, the smoke show. I'm calling it that now. <laughs> I don't know why. It just popped in my head the other day. I was like, yep, that's what the live stream on Saturday is going to be. And I talked to you guys last week about, uh, I'm going to be, I'm starting to, been talking with a local editor. And I'm going to try to have him help me do some filming as well. I have a really good idea, great idea, for a video that I want to make that you guys, I think you guys will love it. But, uh, yeah, this week we're going to be getting together for sure. And maybe getting started on some stuff. That's the goal. I'm going to be ordering a new camera, maybe a couple, probably a GoPro. I'm going to get a, uh, I'm going to buy a gimbal, and I'm going to buy a serious camera, and a couple wireless lav mics. All right, here we go with the Raspberry Jam, my favorite. Mm-hmm. Mm, 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 mm. The only problem that I have with this is they don't give you enough of it. 20, ga 20 grams of raspberry jam just isn't enough. If that was 40, then I might be happy. Maybe. I might want 60. <laughs> it is so good. Sweet, very natural flavor fruit, you know, the raspberry fruit flavor. I mean, I could legit eat like five five packs of this stuff, probably. It's so good. Mm -mm -mm. It's got a perfect color. Mmm. It's not too sweet. It's tangy. It's fruity. It doesn't taste artificial at all because it isn't. Which is awesome. Because you run into a lot of artificial crap in shelf stable food. It's just the reality to be able to make a lot of food shelf stable. Use a lot of artificial type products.
sad but true. There we go. Put them jelly together. It's definitely thick. Although I haven't needed a drink yet. So that says something. It's not too dry either. I feel like they add enough oil and things into their peanut butter that it's not overly dry. And obviously the jam helps out a lot. I'm going to wash that down with some of the sweet and creamy coffee though. Out of the good, good old Bob Ross coffee mug. Actually a color changing mug. Yeah, that is some good coffee. But, I will say that if you are not the type of person that likes your coffee with cream and sugar in it, like, you're screwed with this. That coffee's perfect for me, but for a lot of people who like their coffee with no sugar, only creamer, or black, or just sugar and no creamer, which not too many people do that, but, you know, then you're just up a creek and you're... <laughs> You want your coffee fixed, you're going to have to drink it this way or not at all. That or try to find somebody to trade with who's got an espresso roast or something. So we have an apple here that has, I don't know, a bad spot, I guess. It's like a where a bug ate into it. I'm going to skip that one. Uh, let's go to this one. There we go. Nice fresh apples. <clears throat> uh, Bob Ross's stuff is on YouTube. You are correct. Buyer Boys. Yeah, they uploaded all of his old videos onto YouTube there. I don't know, a couple few years ago, I would say. Maybe longer, I don't know. I'm not exactly sure when they did it. But his um, representatives of his estate, which still run a warehouse with all of his artwork, you know, they have never gotten rid of not one painting that Bob Ross painted on that show. Or not even, you know, that he painted, period. They still have every single one of them. Well, as of the documentary that I watched, which I don't know, it might have been filmed a couple years ago, but... They hadn't gotten rid of anything. Alright, I'm going to have some of this juice. Maybe. Yeah, it's not going to work. I'm just going to throw the bread in it. Soak up some with the bread. Maybe. There we go. Try some with the bread. That definitely works. It's like a, I don't know, it's not exactly like it, but it's like kind of like a biscuit with spiced apples. <clears throat> These apples have a really nice clean taste and flavor to them. The U.S. spiced apples, like, they're way too sweet. and There's just in, too much cinnamon, too much syrup, like that sweet syrup that they're in. It's just it's too much for me. These right here have a really nice, clean, crisp flavor. They have a nice chew to them, a nice bite to them. They're not the the super mushy apples. These are these got a nice chew to them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I dig that. <clears throat> you got a frog in my throat. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sorry about that, guys. Maybe this will help. Straight up blue Gatorade. That's exactly what that tastes like. Kind of has an electrolyte flavor to it. Curious. 
Which these were made in the 123rd day of 2019. We got what kind of sodium we got going on here? 130 milligrams of sodium, so 5% of your daily value. Definitely, well, as it states, a sports drink. So, wanting to raise your carbohydrates or your electrolytes is what I meant to say. Yep, kind of a salty drink. I bet that's what a lot of that is sitting on the bottom right there. I did just stir it again, and it still isn't dissolving. Hmm. Alright, let's check this out. Is there more than one cashew, or is it just the one? There's a little piece of one right there. <laughs> Alright, it's falling apart a little bit where it's set out. I'm going to take a bite right there with that maple almond on it right there. Just take a bite off this corner. Mm. Got to do a lot of chewing. I took a great big bite of that. Don't want to talk in my mouth full and chewing at the same time. Definitely pick up on the maple flavoring, which is what these almonds are coated in, some sort of maple flavoring. <laughs> yeah. Let's see that. Some sort of maple coating. The cranberries are nice. Uh... I don't know. It's just kind of a weird mixture. It doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to me. It doesn't taste bad. It just doesn't taste great. And I think that there's so many other things that you could do with a fruit and nut mix to make it good. And this is not it. Unless I'm missing something. Which I know Canadians are big on the maple syrup. Maybe. I don't know. That's just a thing that you hear. I'm... <laughs> Not Canadian, so I don't know if that they really love it or what. But it's uh I don't know. It's it's okay. It's just not doesn't knock your socks off or anything. It is time for the chunky not crunchy, I said crunchy earlier. Chunky Kit Kat. I said crunchy twice, I believe. Cause I'm cool like that. Nice little air hole there. Pop as this thing was coated. Weird texture going on there. Alright. That is a really nice looking a candy bar though. Give it a try. Mm hmm. Hmm. That is filled with a chocolate cream. Instead of the peanut butter that I think it's typically filled with. A peanut butter cream, not just peanut butter. Hmm. Way too much chocolate. Yeah, I'm not a fan. Which I'm not a huge fan of Kit Kats anyways, even the small ones. But this... The, the chocolate coating on the outside. Now this is a personal preference and a personal opinion. But you can see how thick it is on the sides right there. Pretty thick on the bottom too and the top. But especially so on the sides. Just kind of overpowering. Especially the end. Because you got another extra coating on the very end of chocolate as well. The wafer's nice. Mm-hmm. 
very sweet very overpoweringly sweet this is definitely a nice snack for the younger folks like the ones that are going to be dominantly filling the military most I, you know most of them are probably 25 and under or 30 and under for sure so that's definitely going to take care of the sweet tooth after you have your meal I would call that dessert and I would call the uh, apples more of a snack I don't know why they call apples dessert but uh, it's, hmm. down here in the US most people would not consider this a dessert <clears throat> I don't know why I took a bite of apple just had to kind of cleanse the palate there after that <clears throat> thick chocolate I do like the flavor of that ice sports drink it's just so salty it really is it's just definitely got a lot of sodium content that you can just taste I'm going to go back in for a couple more bites of this before I before I tap out on this meal for the time being and then uh, I'm going to move on I've got those candy bars from Dan that I've been wanting to open for like two weeks And I haven't done it. Yeah, I'm not a fan of the uh, the chicken fat that ended up in here either. Mm mm. Yeah. Both bites that I just took had fat in them. That, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> Not a fan of chicken fat at all. I'm not a fan of hardly any meat fat at all unless it's completely melted down. But, chicken fat in particular is super gross I just oh when it's in its solid form and gelatinous and all that I mean sure if you was to melt it down there's a place for chicken fat for sure it's great flavor but when it's in its solid form no thank you awesome bourbon this is the only one I've tried I tried over there First was green tea. Huh? It's the only one. This is only the second time I tried. I'm over there. First one was green tea. PJ stuff on Army Combat Med pouches from the 60s or Operation Iraq Freedom. Oh! Hey! There will be a Ration Museum live stream tomorrow. I'm inviting you guys to come and hang out. Uh, I should be there in case something, unless something happens, which. I don't think it will. I would like to. Uh, I'd like to have a lot of you guys over there in the chat. Sean with the Rash Museum. He's getting the Rash Museum actually put together. We need to try to build up as many folks as we can to come over there, participate, and uh, he's got some really amazing stuff that he has amassed over the years. That as of right now is the Rash Museum, which is basically most of it came out of his pocket. So, uh, definitely go over there, show them some support. <clears throat> okay, I'm not going to drink the highbrow. I just like the name of that one too well. I'm thinking about drinking one of these. I don't know if uh, Gabriel is still around. If he is. Hmm. It's between that one. Which the Moosehead would be an easy one to drink right now. 
since it is hot I would have to go clean that lid a little bit before I go tipping it up hey Sean I picked up some World War II K ration ads after seeing your live stream the other day yeah that's awesome yep that is awesome they printed so many of those World War II ads that they're still quite commonly around old German style beer I like that can. Dude, this one's a little bit bloated. I'm not gonna, yeah. It's, oh, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, she's under pressure. Under pressure. Down on me. Under pressure. Constitution. This one I've got to find out more about. This black label. Which is a uh, oh, recyclable aluminum. I don't know how I didn't see that earlier. Interesting. So it's between this Laurentide steel can, vintage chug beer, beer chug, vintage beer chug, or this, maybe this Moosehead Canadian lager. Since I am having a Canadian IMP, I guess this would be fitting to uh, chug a Canadian brew. This one, I'm not drinking. This is going to be a display piece only. I think I'm going to discuss this with Gabe, see what he thinks. I mean, obviously, I could clean that up. And obviously, I've drank beers that have been open for many years before that were compromised. Basically, the same thing as what's going on here. The tab on the other ones that I've drank on those on those two or three that I've drank recently that the uh, right here where the the rivet is basically failed over the years and oxygen started getting in one of them some of the beer oozed out and then the last time I drank one of these on a live stream let me grab it because I got it right here I didn't really think about it until I was already committed was uh was it this one? Nope, it wasn't this one. Hang on. Maybe I don't have it here. Handy. Yeah, that might, I must not. Anyway, it was a near beer. Non-alcoholic, uh, you know, near beer. Very uh, silly of me to drink a non-alcoholic beer. This one has that unique, that is a unique seam in my opinion. I haven't seen another one like that. Let me see. There's, you know, see, that's got the typical crimped seam. Is this one? Same crimped seam. What's this one look like? Same crimped seam. And similar. This is, a, this is the older style crimp on the seam versus this here no oh, those are the same hmm what the heck I thought they were different look different for a second so it's between this Laurentide ale or the Moosehead Canadian lager 12 fluid ounces and they're both room temperature so they're nice and warm Gonna be a nice, uh, nice burp session afterwards. I would say. Uh, sitting down for dinner. Have a great night, everyone. Bedtime routine starting the, 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 the starting with the monsters. So I'll be busy wrangling kiddos. Night. A pleasure as always, Mr. Smitty. Well, yep. Good luck putting the kids away quickly, <laughs> or putting them down quickly. Hopefully they go right to sleep. I don't know, guys. The Moosehead, which is uh, the only pop top like this that we have up here. And this must be like a first era aluminum can with the pull tab on top still. It's pretty cool. And this one also has the Georgia tax paid five and a quarter cents. Yeah, there's got to be a story behind that one that I've got to find out. Um, is Gabe still in the comments? If he is, I'm wondering why he sent this one. If there's anything special about this one. 
This is probably one of the first eras of the pop tops like this. Oh, and it's got the barcode as well. This is not one that I can open from the bottom. I mean, I could kind of bang holes in the bottom of it, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to open it. This is the one I'm going to drink, I think. What do you guys think? Kind of fits with the uh, with with the meal of tonight. Canadian lager. And uh, the Laurentide. Again, this is a steel can. Uh, I'm from Quebec. Drank Laurentide a long time ago. And it was meh. I would say the Moosehead beer is probably going to be meh too. <laughs> Seems how it's like pretty pretty daggone old, and it's also hot. I mean, it's probably like 70 degrees or something like that. Maybe a little cooler than that, 65, something like that. It's definitely not going to be, uh, it's not chilled at all, that's for sure. I need to get back into this Shirley Temple over here. I forgot about it. Foster's. It's Australian for beer. Alright, so this is, it, this is the one. I'm going to go clean this mouthpiece up a little bit. As you can see, looks like it might have been laying in uh, some river. Like on a river bank or something. Buried in the sand for a while. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. Something like that. It definitely, some, it definitely looks like sand or dirt. It's probably... This probably thing... This thing probably could have been buried at one point for at least a, maybe a few days. Especially with that rust on there. That's really odd to have on an aluminum can. I mean, it had to come from something else. but Probably sitting near other steel cans where it was buried at. Uh, it is most certainly not Australian for, for beer. Hashtag fake news. <laughs> oh, boy. That's great. Well, now we know, Dan. Thank you. All right, I'm going to clean this thing off real quick. Be right back. It's looking pretty good. We can get it all the way dry down in there, I don't think, but good enough. That's what I'm gonna say. Oh, turn these other lights on since I'm gonna be turning the camera around here. There we go. This is the. I'm gonna say this is probably. I don't know. It's definitely between 35 and 40 years old, as far as the beer goes. Tried to scrub a little bit of that rust off there. It just didn't want to come off there. Kind of surprised. Figured it would come right off. All right, let's crack this bad boy open. That's how uh, it's kind of going to be rounding out the stream with a vintage beer. Again, this is thanks to Gabriel. You guys go check out Gabriel's channel. He's drank like some really cool old stuff over there. And Gabe's the kind of guy, he'll slide in some information just in the most random place that you never would have thought. Or he might make a whole video with no information and you might see another video that slides in some really cool information you never would have known had you not listened or watched his video. All right, here we go. Let's make sure this thing might go crazy foaming. Who knows? was just shipped across the country literally got it 
out of the PU box today. Good lord. This thing is not wanting to. Ooh, wee! There it is. Yeah. Did not want to open. Alright. Ooh, I smell it. Oh my goodness, do I smell it. That is potent. My goodness, it's so strong. The smell, just the smell, is very, very strong. Oh, it just smells like exactly what you would expect. Very skunky beer smell. Very yeasty. Very sour. Oh, I'm already burping just thinking about it. It almost has like a citrus hint to it with the uh, scent. Can't really see it too well. I have a clear cup or anything. I don't have anything I can dump that in. Hmm. Chug this. take a look at a little bit of this in this cup here just a little bit we look at the head on that went away kind of quick but it's definitely got it's got some floaties going on in there I don't know if you guys can really see them but I can see them with my eyeball oh it just smells so bad Oh, yeah. All right. Whew. Flip this camera around. Some here. This is your Moosehead Beer Canadian Lager. It just stinks. So this is one of the worst smelling beers. It's so strong. I don't know. I don't think I'm ready for this. Just chug that whole sports drink. All right, here we go. Here we go. That's bad. That's really bad. It has this weird... <coughs> has this weird sweetness to go along with the sourness. <sighs> oh, it, it, it tastes thick. If that, was a, if that was a flavor, it tastes thick. It's bad. It's gonna be I like I didn't even get halfway through it. I can, my eyes just want to stay like <laughs> they don't want to open up. Whew. 
Oh, it's making my mouth water. Here we go. Whew. Here we go. Whew. I'm sweating. I, there's like a single droplet of sweat rolling down the center of my back right now. Almost came back out. <clears throat> you guys don't even know how close. Mm, you don't even know how close you were to just seeing me puke. <laughs> wow. Uh. It was like a foamy foamy comeback it does have a little bit of a metallic flavor it's very carbonated very carbonated which is good when you're talking with about a vintage drink like this um, it just has this weird sweet sour carbonated and it's it's so yeasty so yeasty now I'm down to about probably about that much <coughs> oh what the it's everything that I can do Trying to keep that on camera. It's making my nose run. It's getting a little bit chunky. That's why I stopped that last time. I probably could have kept going, but if I would have, I believe it would have came back out. Uh, it's, it, it does have a very strong resemblance to some Vegemite it's got this is this is probably like the second or third yeastiest beer that I've ever tried and the only like super yeasty beers like this that I've ever had have been vintage and I've, I've tried a few you know random <clears throat> like exotic homebrew type stuff or small brewery type stuff and micro brews Nothing's ever came close to a aged beer. Sometimes the yeastiness that they that they accumulate or that they pick up or that they grow over the years. And this where this is in an aluminum can, it has helped enhance its aging flavor, is what I would say. And if this would have been in a steel can. It would have been aligned with something, plastic, uh, definitely not porcelain. You know, it would have been aligned with something, but most likely that liner would have been ate away. Not guaranteed, but possibly ate away some because of the acidity of the beer. And then that's why you start getting that heavy metallic flavor, is because it's ate through the lining at some point and, <clears throat> and started to dissolve the metal from the inside out. And... Uh, yeah this this you don't get that with an aluminum can aluminum can hold up forever never rust <clears throat> never decay man oh man I'm, de I'm i'm delaying i know i am tell you what this one's hitting my stomach like a ton of bricks too i gotta finish it though Oh. Oh. 
that's it. <clears throat> the chunky stuff at the bottom. It's sweet and tangy and chunky and gross. I don't know if I can show you this, but I'll have to wait till I turn the camera around. There's a couple of the little chunks floating in the uh, the rim of this and these are just little ones um, I'm gonna flip it around and show you this maybe okay see see that right there there's two of them in there they, they came together but as you can see see it there were um, chunks probably about 10 to 15 times that size probably towards the bottom and from what we can tell is it's, it's some sort of culture the yeast starts to bind together and uh, forms proteins and that's what we think that is. This is uh, this is coming directly from Gabe, as far as his theory on what the chunks in the old beers are, and he thinks that they are what I just said. They're, they're the the yeast, the cultures start to come together. You know, they're alive. It's a live culture, and that starts to form proteins that that literally will grow into chunks like that. Whew. It's all just like Texas. Vegemite, koalas, everything. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that beer, likely 5% as most Canadian lagers are. Yeah, I was curious about that. I don't know uh, if the alcohol content might have been a little bit lower where it was older. Uh Oh, oh boy I gotta be careful burping like that because this is not wanting to stay down I'll tell you what guys that is the closest you've ever seen me on camera to puking I'm pretty good at uh, not puking I'm no Jerry Seinfeld but I think he had a, a 10 or 11 year record and I'll tell you back when in November whenever I had uh, pancreatitis I didn't actually get sick puking sick. I made myself puke because I thought I had food poisoning. That's what it, like I looked up, basically typed in what all my symptoms were, looked it up, and one of the things that came up was food poisoning, and I had had chicken on the flight before I came home, and I thought that I had, I, well, plus whatever I had eaten on, you know, for the show-wise, probably the day before, um, or maybe... Yeah, yeah, it would have been the day before. Anyway, I thought uh, that I, I had food poisoning, so I, I induced vomiting and puked and puked, and it just was not helping. And then Fireman Food sent me, um, what are those things called? Hang on a second. Let me, I'm going to go grab them because I can't, it's something, I think they're German, these things he sent me. Yes, this is the exact one that, this is one of them, but this is the exact one that I drank. I drank this, this Underberg, thinking, because he, he preaches, Fireman Food does, about how awesome this stuff is, and I've actually seen him giving this to his dog, and his dog was drinking it right out of the bottle. And it's supposed to really, really aid in digestion. It's supposed to help soothe the stomach. It's supposed to do all this stuff. I don't know what it's... See, Underberg is an herb bitters taken for digestion. It is not a beverage. Not to be sipped, but taken all at once and quickly because of the aromatic, strong taste. It is also used as a flavoring. 
imported by Underberg Sales Corporation, blah, 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 Webster Highway, Meredith, New Hampshire. But yeah, so this is a bitters, but like I was saying, it's like it's meant to do all kinds of this stuff, and it is, wow, 44% alcohol by volume. And, you know, like I've told you guys a million times, I'm not, I'm just, I'm not a drinker. I'm just not, I, I choose to stay away from alcohol, and... Yeah, you're supposed to drink it after a good meal. It's supposed to soothe your stomach and aid in digestion and all that good stuff. But I decided that I would drink this to try to help because I, I, I thought for sure that I had food poisoning. I had something stomach going on. And boy, oh boy, did uh, it not help <laughs> at all. Didn't help me at all. And then when I went to the hospital, which I'm sure I had puked that back up at that point they tried to accuse me of being an alcoholic and like all that. i was like dude i was like i don't even drink well that's typically the common cause of uh, uh, uh pancreatitis i'm like well i can't help it man that's not like that's not what's going on here buddy they were ticking me off because like they were all so adamant about just pushing the, the alcoholism aspect i was like dude i couldn't even tell you the last time i had a drink <clears throat> I'm sure it was uh, sitting down at a meal somewhere or something. Something like that. So I'm going to tell you guys after that beer, I am definitely in the mood for a palm all. Should have three of these left. Yes, and I'm going to save two of them. This will be the last one of these I take out of here. Until... I have another vintage beer. Oh. oh man, I need to try to fix this little little box. Now Hunter, I think Gunner, sorry Gunner. Gunner, are you still in the comments on here, bud? The live chat. Gunner. Okay, so, Gunner, <clears throat> whenever I finish this pack up, I know you said you needed a pack for your helmet. I'll send you this empty pack whenever I, whenever I empty it. Because I know... Oh, sorry, Super Chat, I see that, Miss Marilyn, just one second. I know you said you needed one for a... for a helmet or something like that. And, uh... I'll, I'll give you this one, that empty pack, when it's done. See that a little bit smashed in there. I mean, it's it's a good good for display, and especially if you're going to put it on the side of a helmet, that also compresses the little packets anyway. So, no big deal there. Oh, CT. Oh, okay. <laughs> this must... When did this come in? Oh, boy. Well, thank you, CT, for the... Uh, Thirteen ninety nine uh, Canadian doubloons up there. I don't know what you guys call them, loonies, <laughs> something like that. Thank you so much for that super chat, CT. It's getting easier to hold this down, but it's still there. It is still there. The uh, the it's wanting to come back out. It, I don't get it. I mean, I get it, but I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it at all. Here we go. I don't know. Should I light this with a match? I feel like I'm going to light it with a match. Surely I got some matches handy, right? Let's see if I can find a pack of matches. Aha. There's a pack. A bunch of freaking packs of sugar and wet, moist towelettes and iodized salt. All right. Now, I'll tell you guys something, <clears throat> something I was thinking about doing tonight. Probably not. Probably wouldn't be interesting to you guys. But I've got some stuff that I need to send out <coughs> to my patrons, and uh, I'm going to be doing it kind of in order from largest to smallest. 
and one item that I want to put together, I'm going to put this together. I don't, I don't know exactly what's going to be in it yet, but I have a lot of um, extras, or like I've got extra mains, I've got extra sides, I've got, you know, I've got all kinds of cool stuff that's that could make up one heck of a meal, right? And I'll show you guys what I'm thinking here. So what I want to put together is I want to make a meal in this in this little box right here. Put this little padlock on it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Maybe. <clears throat> My goodness. Definitely got the old frog in the throat tonight. I'm going to have to take one of these keys off here to be able to unlock the stupid thing. There we go. One of these days. There we go. padlock up on you like so but this thing will fit I'm gonna say it's probably not gonna be a 24 hour ration but it'll be at least a solid I don't know couple mains might be able to throw a breakfast in there too like a filled French toast or something like that two full mains and as many sides and drinks and stuff like that as I can throw up in there but that's what I'm thinking, is uh, building out a little meal. Not something that I typically do, not something that I, I don't know, it's something I thought would be fun to do once. Not something I would, like I said, not something I would typically do, but it's something I think I could have fun doing once. I don't know, maybe if I have a whole lot of fun, I might do it twice, but eh, let's see. But I'm thinking, build this out with some cool stuff. Some leftovers from some 24-hour rations and, you know, like uh, like I said, a filled French toast was a breakfast item or something. See if I can't manage to put together a 24-hour meal in that amount of space right there. I mean, that's probably close to enough space, I would think. Right here is a U.S. main box. Yeah, so a retort out not in the box it's going to fit right down in there with no problem or even upright maybe because we know the retorts are, are not as big as the boxes obviously yeah i think i could get a close to a 24-hour ration built in this little box and uh and send this off to one of the patrons well not just this so this is just one of the things that would be in the box and then whatever else I could fit in the uh, United States Post Office flat rate box to go along with it. But that's what I'm thinking. I was thinking about doing something like that, building it out here on the live stream. Maybe having you guys help me along with it or something like that. Give me suggestions. I can dig out a bunch of stuff that I have. As far as, uh, I mean, I've got full meals that I can break down. And we can take items out of that. Uh, we can put couple survival gear items up in there like i don't know just have fun with it you know what i mean that way it's it it just adds a little bit more personal touch to something building it out here on a live stream with everybody helping out that would you know that would be even more sentimental i think in my opinion and uh yeah one one lucky patron would get the first one and if it works out really good and and everybody likes it or they like it whatever and build out another one at some other point and continue to do so I have a World War II lighter here too that I used I used to use it all the time 
right here. <clears throat> it's in here with some steel war scents. I threw that in there to some steel war pennies. 43. They're all 43. They should be. I thought about breaking out my coin collection too, because I want to look for my grandpa's silver dollar. I put it up years ago and haven't haven't messed with it in years. Oh, I guess there's five steel war pennies in there. And here's the lighter. I haven't filled it up in a long time. I'm sure it won't light. Well, I mean, it'll light if I put fluid in it, but there's no fluid in it right now. The wick on it's pretty, pretty rough. Yeah. Need to find some wicks for this thing. And I'm not going to take that out of there because the screw does not want to stay in it. I guess I'll look at it. It's been a while. Yeah, see? Kind of backed out. Fell off or something. It presses on that spring in there. It keeps the flint pressed up against the striker. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, it's striking good. Now, I do need to fill, fill this thing back up. Is that how it goes? Like that. I'm not sure. I guess it doesn't really matter. I don't know. That's a cool lighter, though. For sure. Really nice and slim, too. If I was to use this as my everyday... Which they still sell lighters like this. You can still pick up lighters like this. Solid brass. They look like gold. And I'm letting my palm all burn up. Dang it. Oh. Yeah, that's 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 good stuff right there. Nice and smooth. Bold. Flavorful. Don't put the pennies on top of the lighter because they will scratch it. There we go. I don't know if I... I guess I put that toilet paper in there to uh, as like a buffer. Okay, I'll show you guys one of the worst can openers that I've ever had. Boom. Right there. I don't think there's anything printed on it. This is legit the worst can opener that I've ever had. It does not fold. It's not a folding can opener like a P38 is. This is Russian. This came out of a uh, a Russian 10-man or 5-man meal. Can't remember 24 hours. It's a five man 24 hour meal. And Shocker sent me this. And this thing will not open a can. Look at that. I mean I could take a take a file, maybe. If I can hold still enough. But it will not. I've tried and tried and tried to uh open a can with that thing and it will not do it it's it's literally the worst can opener i've ever owned uh aletha i haven't broke 50 subs well maybe we can help you out with that aletha why don't you guys go sub to aletha's channel <laughs> see if uh see if we can break 50 subscribers on aletha's channel i'm gonna go right now because i know i'm not subscribed i'm sure Okay, guys. I'm going to find it right now. Let me see here. Hmm. 
just kicked me out. There we go. B E. Hang on. TT. Now, I did mention that I, I'm going to try. Uh, the goal is, the plan is, I will be in Kentucky next Saturday. So, that's going to probably be a pretty interesting live stream, I hope. Should be nice and, and uh, mobile. There should be a lot of movement in that live stream. Moving the camera around, checking items out, doing some survival type stuff. Okay, there we are, right there. Whoop, sorry. Right here. There you go. You got no videos, Aletha. You got to make videos. <laughs> you got to post something. But you got 22 subscribers now. Because I just subscribed. Let me refresh. 22. Anybody else want to go subscribe? And I'll, I'll refresh the subscriber count every uh, couple minutes or so. Let's break 50 for Aletha. <laughs> All right. Hopefully my son will eat this. Because uh, it's got so much sodium in it, guys. I mean, I, I, if I eat this tomorrow, I will have the worst headache. That's what happens if I eat something that's really, really sodium enriched or sodium dense. I end up with a horrible headache. I've been finding this out. Um, got my blood pressure under control. That's not a problem. And, uh, oh, that reminds me. Hang on a sec. Because I meant, I meant to do this earlier. So I've been taking this stuff right here for about 10 days, I would say, roughly, and I am definitely seeing a difference. If you've ever contemplated getting it and trying it, I would, I would suggest it so far. It seems like it's taken a little bit longer for it to really get to its optimum ability of working for me, but uh, some people get pretty instantaneous results with it. And mine have been kind of slow moving, but they are. it is definitely improving my blood flow, which is what I needed, blood flow to my leg. And uh, says, naturally boosting your production of nitric oxide to improve, hang on, your blood flow and heart health while getting that immune system kicked into gear. And your energy levels up by boosting stamina. Benefit from a healthy blood pressure, improved cognitive fun function, improved fat loss, and better digestion. And I gotta say, like everything that they say that it does, it does seem to do. So it cost me $50 for a month's supply. And a lot of men take, they stack it, they, they call it stacking with uh, their other crap they call Testro X. I'm not doing that. I will not be doing that. But, and they want like 70 bucks for the Testro X stuff, which is too much, in my opinion. Somewhat restore the blood flow to my leg, because it's more or less been destroyed. And uh, that's why I still have an open wound on my leg, is because the blood flow is so so poor and uh, I'm going to take my final dose of the day for uh, of this oh super chat Miss Marilyn okay let me let me take these real quick and uh, I'll track that Okay, super chat. Yeah, I don't know if you guys would be interested in me building out a, a, some kind of ration thing on here or not. Uh, the Keister Corner 
the Keister Corner account. Oh, okay. Aletha, Aletha's other account is kaput. Wait, what? The Keister's Corner account, Smokey. Aletha's other account is kaput. Uh, thank you for the super chat there, Cyanide Cookies or Dan from Australia. Uh, Dan, dude, you got you got to email me. I don't know, maybe you did email me back, and I haven't checked it today. But uh, there's something I, I want to try to set you up with, so me and you can, uh, well, not just me and you, me and you and others can we can instantly talk. Uh, I drove up to Fairbanks to get like seven MRE cases for like two hundred dollars, and turned into a camping trip with the family. Well, that's not bad. Seven MRE cases for like two hundred bucks. That's that's not bad at all what is that like less than 30 bucks a case if those are military mres and they're not old that's a, that's 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 a good deal i mean that's that's pretty much what i used to pay for them what i would pay for them and the most i would ever pay for an mre a standard military mre five bucks a piece that's sixty dollars for a case and uh that's with shipping i don't want to pay any more than that and i won't i just won't they're not worth it to me um, unless they stay at some crazy price for a, a really long time I'm not doing that because you know of course I'm sure you guys know that I stay stocked up on just about everything but I mean I have MREs I don't have a lot of fresh MREs uh, you know I'm a, I'm, I'm a vintage guy I like them I like to eat that old food but I do have some fr uh, fresh MREs, I do have I do have plenty of fresh rations, I would say. I would say fresh ration count, I would put myself at having enough to get my family through. Uh, just at a ballpark guess. And when I call it fresh, I mean anything from like 2015 up. I would say enough to get us, me and my, all, well, just all four of us, me and three other people through at least six months of fresh food and uh if you if you want to count in my because i can i survive off the vintage stuff i don't care if you if you wanted to count that stuff in uh i got probably a year's worth of food um, and, and i have a lot of mres that are from like 2008 2007 2005 that are mostly good uh, I've run into some 05s and 07s and 08s sometimes that have a couple items that are off in them. But, you know, you can still get most of the rations still edible. Uh, ideal menu years, 2018. Gunner, you're a way off, buddy. Duh. That is not, not even close, bud. Ideal MRE menus year is probably 1994. You still got the corned beef hash. You got chili mac that's came out. Or is that 95? 94, 95. You got pound cakes that have came out, which the nut cakes are good. But, I mean, it, I don't like the first year's flavors of, of pound cakes. I will say that. I've had the chocolate mint ones. I've had the orange ones. The pineapple ones are good. Uh, the vanilla ones is all right. But the, the early years of pound cakes, they were, I don't know what they tasted like when they were fresh. But now that they've got 30 years on them pretty much, they, they're, not, they're not that great. So the nut cakes do hold up a lot better. I'll say that as far as their edibility. And... Uh, you know, I, when it comes to vintage cakes, I would probably prefer that. So, if you want to do that, like 1992 is also a really good pick as far as menus, ideal menus go. And uh, you'd get two cases of the same menu, so you'd get doubles of, of every menu. You'd get two corned beef hashes, you get two ham slices, you get two scalloped potatoes with ham, uh, two chicken and rice. One of my favorite vintage menus. Great menu. Chicken and rice is fantastic. Uh, you get two Four Fingers of Death, which the, the 90s era ones are not bad. Um, what else? 
Especially if you could, like, choose to have fresh, or possibly have fresh, ideal, since we're going, like, theoretical, ideal lineup, then 1992 would probably be it. On the other account now, wait, have I missed something here? I bet I have. Ruby Hill, a.k.a. Dragonfly. Miss Marilyn, you need to have a YouTube channel showing, like, I don't know, like, make videos about making good, different flavor of gooey butter cakes and pieces of equipment and stuff like that. I, I mean, I'd watch that. The video that Tracy did when he brought the grandkids down to visit you at, uh, uh, call it your gooey butter cake factory. <laughs> uh, I, that, I think that's great. It's got a good atmosphere. Is Keister Corner. Okay, your video account is Keister Corner 1. Okay. The account won't allow me to upload. Why not? Oh, this account. Okay. I don't understand why not, though. That's weird. Huh. Without being a, to up, able to upload, you can't create a... Uh... So you're talking about you're wanting people to subscribe to Keister's Corner. Okay. Let me find that here. Okay. Oh, okay. Boom. Wow. How about that? It popped up without even... Is that it right there? Is that it? Because you're at 126, 127. Let me refresh. 127 subscribers now. The pick is sideways. What? That's not it? Oh, man. I just subscribed to the wrong person. Unsubscribe. <laughs> is this... Um... Wait, you said you had to type in Keister's Corner or something. Trying to find out how we go subscribe to... Aletha's channel. Keister's Corner 1, okay. 1. Uh, not seeing it. Ain't it messed up how it's hard to find things on YouTube? Ain't it messed up how there's another Keister's Corner? Am I pronouncing that wrong? Is it Kester's Corner? Quick yay or nay on that. Oh, corners with a K. I'll be okay. Boom. Ah, found it. Boom, you're at 49. Let me refresh. Oh, here, I got to go into it. Boom, 49. And it needs one more. Who's going to be the one? Who's going to be the one? Somebody gets to be number 50. Boom, boom, boom. I had no idea you had another channel. You guys. Now I know. And guess what? Now I'm subscribed, so I'll get maybe some notifications. Who knows with YouTube? Because they're awesome like that. But all right. I got to say, uh, I don't know about you guys, but I could tell a difference in my uh, demeanor after having that. Seem to have loosened me up just a little bit. Why did I put that back in there? Did I Did I eat more of that after? I don't know what I've done. I don't know. These apples are calling my name. <laughs> Gotta have me a couple. Yep. yep. Mm-hmm. Mmm. -hmm. Buyer boys, you're at 50 now, ma'am. Round of applause for Buyers Brothers. Hitting that first big milestone of 50. The next big milestone will be 100. Next milestone after 100 is 500. Next milestone after that, I would call it 1,000. Then 2,000. 
and then 5,000, and so on and so forth. 10,000, and then kind of you just kind of double it after that. 20,000, then it's 50, and then it's 100. I really want to hit 100. I want that freaking YouTube play button. I really want to get one of those things. I don't know why. <laughs> just so YouTube has to spend a little bit of money to make something for me. You know what I mean? Like, everybody makes videos and makes things for YouTube that they that they profit so heavily off of. And they make you wait till you hit 100,000 subscribers before they give you anything back. It's like, screw you guys. They're keeping, honestly, they're keeping a, an insane amount of your ad revenue that you should be getting. There should be a cap on that. They should be able to keep maximum 10% of anything that you make on YouTube and that is not the case the ad revenue they're probably keeping something like if I was to guess this is seriously a random guess I don't know this for sure but I would say it's 50% or more and uh, yeah they, they just like to stick their hands in pots where they don't really belong sure they give you a platform they obviously have to have servers, and maybe they're paying for those servers, or at least they bought and paid for those servers. But they're making, I don't know, probably in the close to the a billion dollars a year or more. Like, who needs to be making that much money, man? Like, give back a little bit to the people that, that made your platform so great. And quit taking channels down that don't deserve to be taken down. Yeah, Renee Hathaway, me neither. The uh, YouTube has became such a uh, politically standing place or thing, entity, that uh, it's ruined itself. It has literally ruined itself. YouTube didn't start out that way. YouTube started out like it was a platform for you. The name said it all. It's your tube. It's YouTube for you to post what you like, what you think is cool, what you think would be great, that hopefully other people will like. And, you know, you think back, I mean, honestly, you think back to pre-2016, before the first apocalypse, and that's what it used to be. And then it just turned into this PC, I mean, cesspool, politically correct, everything's got to be YouTube's way or no way. It's, it's very hard to look at YouTube in in the same light and they, they're becoming so commercialized and they want to be they want to be the next cable television they kind of already are you know a lot of people don't even have television they'll have they'll have like a Netflix account or an Amazon Prime account or both and then they use YouTube a lot and that's basically what they have for television I still watch cable television I still have cable television. I mean, I have a television show that's on cable television. I am going to have cable television. Now, uh, honestly, it's still, I think it's, as far as television goes, it's still a value for what you get. And I think, honestly, unless it changes a whole lot, I think it'll still be that way. I think they produce great television shows for channels that are on cable television. And sure, there are other outlets where you can get those same shows. Like, from my, for instance, for my show, you can go to history.com and see it that way or if you have cable and satellite you can go to on demand but you also get it through uh, Hulu live you can get it through uh, you can get it through YouTube you can pay for an episode or you can pay for the whole season I'm not even sure how much a season cost I think it's, that's, that's a good question I think it's like thirty dollars curious I'm gonna look it up Okay, eating history. Four episodes. What? Unboxing a nineteen fifty seven steamed fruitcake eating history. Korean and Vietnam War. Sky history? I don't know what this is. Huh. Wonder where they got that picture of me. I've never even seen that picture. Cool. <laughs> Interesting. I literally have never seen that picture. I mean, obviously, I sat down to take that picture. I've just never seen it. 
And I'm not having any luck finding the full episodes. The official end of Forged in Fire. Really? Didn't know that was coming either. Hmm. There is a channel called Tasting History. Okay. Gotta see what this is all about. Okay. How long has this channel been up? This channel is seven months old. And dude has... He must have came over from like TikTok or something. He's got 300... And 34,000 subscribers and 39 videos. It's only been up seven months. Dude's channel blew up. Um, searches related to eating history. For some reason, you guys see that? That's on my channel right there. They, they gave that video to me to post. For some reason, that thing has done really, really well. all kinds of new posts from this sky history thing it used to say on here like uh oh those are cool too you guys if you haven't checked those out we did after on josh's channel the josh mccuga channel or josh mccuga show sorry uh those are cool they need to bring back project blue book golly i need to redo my channel banner that thing looks awful it looks outdated I can't find it maybe if I click on one of the videos it'll tell me um, maybe if I go to the playlist nope Oh, here we go. It says by the season. 11 episodes. Guess I'm going to click into that and see. Buck 99 an episode. Yep. Huh. Okay, how the heck did that get in there? They're going to charge you... A dollar ninety nine for eating history sneak peek. That's two minutes and two seconds long. That's weird. I would say nobody buy that. Because that right there is on my channel for free. It's on my it's uh I think it's on my channel and it's definitely on my Instagram. Mm. Whole season seventeen bucks. Which I guess is a little bit of a discount if you buy the whole season. But anyways, like I was saying, you can buy the whole thing on there. Alright, well, there's that. And that, that right there, that is one of my favorite, favorite things. Was the whole bug thing that I made. Well, I didn't make him. But, uh... sorry <clears throat> all right so you guys let me know comments whatever whatever uh, my chat's not working at the moment for some for some reason let me try to fix it huh uh well jaw or buyer boys uh there are a couple of full episodes that I found on here that have been, you know, pirated. Right there's one. I don't know why it's called that, but... There's one. And I haven't found any of the other ones that are full episodes. And if you live in Canada, hey, you can watch it on TV on Wednesday. Please do. 
I don't know what the ratings look like up there in Canada right now or have looked like, but heck yeah. I'm looking through the list right now just to see if I see any see any more. But they take man, they take those pirated episodes down so quickly. Uh, typically, and I think the only reason that this one right here has stayed up. Sorry. I think the only reason this one right here stayed up so long is because they changed the sound on it and they put it in like this. This is how people get around it. I'll just show you guys real quick like what I'm talking about. Oh, hang on. Yeah, okay, so they changed the sound and they put it in this little box right here. It's kind of weird. But yeah. Alright guys, I want to wrap up this live stream. If anybody's interested in seeing me build out a ration next week, I'll, I'll if get it in the comments of this. That way I can start throwing together a bunch of spare ration parts. Like I'll, I'll just break out as much as I can. And uh, see what I can do, you know. Oh, man. Forgot about the Tabasco. Too late now. That stuff's cold as... No, I'm not doing it. <laughs> Sorry. Ain't gonna happen. Not gonna do it. Dana Carby. Acting like George Bush. How many of you guys remember that? Dana Carby. And his George Bush, and, uh, George Bush impression. Back in the good old days of SNL. All right. Yeah. It, either way, I'm, I'm going to. I'm probably going to use this to uh, build out a little ration for the first box that I throw out. To uh, I'll have to look at my list of patrons and see who that's going to go to. But yeah. I'm going to get my cleanup done. Got some beers to put up. Got some beers to research. All those back there. Good old Gaby Rilla. My dude. If you guys haven't went over there to Gabe's channel and checked out the uh, videos, he came to West Virginia here. We shot some, I don't know, it's like five videos he released of uh, Mothman searching, I guess. Whatever you want to call it. There's some pretty weird stuff ended up happening, and, uh, like, we found this, we found a, I've never seen a bobcat alive. I actually have never seen one dead near my home. This is very near my home. This is a, I don't know, 15, maybe 20 minute drive from where I, I'm, I'm standing right now, and we found, like, this perfectly preserved bobcat. And you'll have to go over there and look at that video. I, when I say it, it wasn't exactly perfect, it looked perfect. All except for one little spot on it. It just didn't make any sense why animals hadn't, you know, eaten thing or done something with it. It was just weird. Uh, and I don't like seeing any animal like that. I mean, of course, it looked like it would have been a healthy bobcat. And I don't have any idea how it would have died. But yeah, definitely go check that out. Some other weird stuff happened to us, especially towards the end of the night. And hopefully Gabe's going to be coming back and we're going to be doing some other cool stuff like that. Probably this winter, I would say. I think that's what he said he was going to do. Got some uh, paranormal stuff that we can, me and him have, well, I've definitely got some stuff planned that me and him can go do. I'm going to get my buddy that I worked with for many years. It's like a brother to, to participate in that because he's the one that knows the locations. Links have been showing up in Anchorage a lot lately. Never seen one in, in the wild myself. Yeah, I've never seen a bobcat running around either. I've seen plenty of wolves. I've seen, or not wolves, but coyotes. I've seen plenty of coyotes. And every other animal that you can really think of in West Virginia, but I've never seen a bobcat. And like I said, you have to go over there and check out Gabe's videos because he's got all the footage and, and stuff like that over there. Probably about a year ago right now. So that'd tell you about how long you've got to scroll back. 
uh, maybe a little bit longer than a year ago. I don't know. I don't know. How long ago would that have been? Maybe a year and a few months ago, something like that. It ain't going to be hard to find. I don't know if he used the thumbnails that I made for him over there or not. But, uh, yeah, definitely go check that out over on Gabe's channel. There's a link to Gabe's channel right at the top of my description. There's also a link to Minotaur Trading Company if you guys want to go over there and check out those new... He's got a keto ration over there he just came out with. Lots of freeze-dried stuff. Uh, pretty high calorie counts over there. I think it's like 22, 2300 calories. Calling that a single meal. Maybe it's more than that even. I don't know. It's up there. Um, cold weather rations. So, definitely check it out. Shot a bobcat trying to kill you. Really? What? That's crazy. I don't know if I could kill a bobcat, man. I don't know if I could bring myself to do it. I believe I'd fight it. <laughs> uh, it might sound crazy. I just do I, I'd try to smack it around a little bit and see if I could get it to run away because I wouldn't want to kill it. Especially after seeing one in person. Like they're not, I mean, they're, they're big for a cat, obviously. But they're not big enough that I feel like I, they'd be a, too much of a threat to me because they're, I don't know, they're like probably a third the size of my dog, probably, roughly. Especially weight when you factor in the weight i'd probably end up taking some pretty good bites though at first i was like oh well another smoky stream but look at those cans <laughs> yeah uh yeah there's a lot of cans man uh and i downed this one right here one of the hardest beers i've drank in a long time I, there was a couple i did on the show that were which I didn't chug those, but they were there was a couple on the show that were pretty hard to drink. But this one right here, drinking the whole thing, this thing was rough. You guys almost seen me puke on live stream, <laughs> almost. And it would I didn't have nowhere to puke. Like there's no, I, I had to grab the box that Gabe sent me and puke into it. I guess I don't know. So I mean it was like it was like that close. <laughs> it was so close. All right, guys. Well, I'm gonna wrap it up. I'm going to uh, be doing some meeting with the uh, editor and hopefully filming agent, my, well, not agent, my hopefully my partner is going to help me out and hopefully get some stuff rolling, get some equipment purchased, and uh, you know what, I'm just going to, I've saved up Patreon money, that's exactly what I'm going to do with that, and that will most definitely help expand the channel, pumping out video, this, this kid is way 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 better at editing than anybody i know so and he's willing to he's willing to lend a hand and uh you know if he helps me get the channel really going uh be able to actually start paying him something <laughs> he's going to be an intern for a little while <laughs> so but uh yeah so i'm looking forward to that and hopefully within the next couple weeks we'll be able to start pumping something like that out probably going to give him access to my channel so he can actually do the edits and upload from his computer and uh which of course i'll be there with him putting in the descriptions and stuff like that but it's definitely i got some plans and hopefully it's gonna it's gonna come together so thanks all you guys cyanide cookies dan you're still on here definitely get a hold of me dude um if you didn't already and uh, i want to get your okay on something and uh we'll be able to stay in closer contact but all right guys Guess really all I got left to do is say thank you guys for watching and hanging out, and I'll see you on the next live stream. Later. <laughs>